coming to you live across America, around the globe, and throughout the known universe. This is the Ron Reagan Show, and all you can eat, banquet for the mind. And this is one of the days when uh, we actually sort of live up to that. This is a banner day on the show. I'm very excited uh, to be talking to our next guest. He is a world-renowned uh, evolutionary biologist, the author of a number of books, including The God Delusion, The Selfish Gene, The Blind Watchmaker, The Ancestor's Tale. He's won numerous awards, uh, including the Royal Society of Literature Award, uh, the British Book Awards Author of the Year Award, Galaxy British Book Awards Author of the Year Award uh, in 2007, International Cosmos Prize of, of Japan. I have to notice, I, I can't help noticing, though, that one award that isn't listed here is the, the one that we actually both both were recipients of, the Freedom from Religion Foundation's Emperor Has No Clothes Award. Full disclosure, both Richard Dawkins and I have won that award. Richard, welcome to the show. It's a great pleasure to have you. Good evening. Uh, yes, I noticed that you didn't mention that Emperor Has No Clothes Award there. I was a little... <laughs> no, I, that's quite true. I didn't. But I'm very proud of it, nevertheless. Did you win it as well? I did. I did, good indeed. We're, we're, well we're co-recipients. I'm, yeah. I'm terribly proud to be in such a good uh, good company. Well, uh, your new book is The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution. And you really put the wood to, to evolution uh, doubters uh, with great relish, as you always do. But I, I can't help wondering whether this isn't just terribly frustrating to you, like having to defend gravity or a spherical earth or something. Yes, yeah, very like that. Relish is a good word, though. I do quite enjoy it. Um, somebody said it's a bit like trying to defend the proposition that 2 plus 2 equals 4 to somebody who says it's 5. It really is a bit like that. Is this an argument that is, is raging in other por parts of the world, or is it really mostly uh, the, the United States? I mean, we just don't seem to be able to get beyond this here. The infection is spreading to Britain, I fear, uh, partly because of Islamic influence, because, of course, in the Islamic world, um, they believe the Koran is literally true, every single word of it. And so um, that's giving us a bit of trouble. And there is also some invasion from America and Australia of this kind of influence. I can understand, I, I suppose, fundamentalist Islam. I, I suppose as I can understand fundamentalist, fundamentalist Christianity here. But it still seems terribly odd in, in a country like the United States, which is, you know, so much about science and technology in many respects, that we could be having this, this just brain-addled conversation here about well, something that is the fundamental ten tenet of biology. Uh, it is an extraordinary contradiction because, of course, America is without question the leading scientific power in the world, and yet at the same time, it's so extraordinarily backward. It's as though it's divided into two separate nations. Uh, in, uh, it does seem that way sometimes. Now, uh, I want to get to some of the uh, the particulars of, of your case for evolution and, and against creationism or intelligent design, but I, I just want to sort of talk generally a little bit first. Uh, I'm thinking back to 2008, the presidential election, where three of the ten Republican candidates at a particular presidential debate they were they were having uh, raised their hands to signal that they did not accept evolution as sound science. How serious a problem is scientific literacy among elected leaders, among other people? I wonder whether they really did feel that or whether they felt they were getting votes that way. I mean, it's shocking to me that they should have been winning votes in that way, mm -hmm. but the polls suggest that they probably were, and so maybe they weren't really sincere. What do you think about that? Well, that's possible. I mean, they, they were, uh, they, I'm sure they were cognizant of the fact that they had a, a base of uh, potential voters out there who, uh, who would be very disappointed if, if they didn't raise their hand for that. I, I often wonder, though, why people don't simply disqualify people from that, like that, from, uh, from any serious consideration. To me, not believing in evolution would be, or believing is the wrong way to put it, of course, but uh, not accepting evolution would be a little like uh, insisting that the Earth is flat. That would be well, an automatic it, disqualification for yes, high office. It, it uh, certainly would. I, I mean, that, I think that's absolutely right. And I sometimes wonder why when politicians suck up to one particular constituency, they don't worry about losing another constituency. It's all very well sucking up to the fundamentalist religious right. But at the same time, you're losing thousands of other people who, as you say, would simply disqualify them because of that. 
You, yeah, you would you would think so. Now, uh, we're familiar in this country, uh, certainly, with the uh, the term creationism. Uh, this has since, uh, over the last few years, of course, morphed into something that uh, is often called intelligent design. Is this uh, just old wine in a new bottle? Yes, that's been a very excellent description. This is a political device to try to get around some uh, of the laws in, Amer- in America about separation of church and state. So they have to represent it as being a non-religious point of view. And so they rechristened it intelligent design as a purely political tactic. And they, and they recruit a few, uh, a few scientists, though rarely evolutionary biologists, uh, to, to lend them some sort of credibility, somebody with a Ph.D. after their name in some <laughs> discipline. I fear that, that, that there must, it can't be that difficult to get a Ph.D. But you see some <laughs> of those people that they trot out with Ph.D.s. There must be some universities that give out pretty, pretty easy Ph.D.s. I, I, I would guess so. Well, let's let's take some of the uh, the uh, the issues that have to do with uh, with creationism uh, versus versus evolution here. I'll I'll play devil's advocate for you uh, for you here. Uh, play the uh, the part of the intelligent design uh, person here. Uh, first off, it's uh, evolution. It's just a theory. It's just some idea that some old guy with a white beard had 150 some odd years ago. <laughs> yes, nice to could say the old guy with a with a white beard. That sometimes confused another old guy with a white beard. <laughs> Yes, um, yes um, that, this is what I deal with in chapter one of the book, this just a theory business. Um, the word theory is a very convenient word for them to use because it suggests that it's just a hypothesis, just a sort of vague idea that might be right and might be wrong and is yet to be confirmed. Of course, it isn't that kind of theory at all. It's like the, the, the solar system theory. It's like the theory of gravitation. It's a fact. It's something that we know to be true. When Darwin first put it forward, I suppose it could have been reasonably thought to be a hypothesis. But now the evidence is so overwhelming that it's become a theory in the other sense, which means something that is universally accepted by all informed scientists. And of course, because it's just a theory, there's some great controversy controversy in the scientific community over evolution as well. You'll hear that uh, from the intelligent design people that uh, you know there, there's a big fight going on among biologists about whether evolution is really does describe nature or not. Well, that's the big lie that they're putting about. They really want people to believe that there is a controversy. Teach the controversy, they say, as though there really was a controversy. And this is the main reason why I and many of my colleagues will not do formal debates with them. Because if you do a formal debate with them, then you're perpetuating the fiction that there really is something to to have a debate about. Mm -hmm. It would be as if you had a formal debate uh, with a flat earther and give you the impression that there really is something serious to debate. There really isn't. There is no scientific debate. There are, of course, plenty of scientific debates within the subject of evolution. Very interesting they are, but they are not about whether evolution itself has happened. That is a definite fact. I, you know, I, th- this is one thing I, I, I wonder about that because I've heard other people propose the idea of, okay, let's just have this out. Let's let's have a formal debate. Your name is, of course, always mentioned, uh, and let's bring you know whether whoever the intelligent design people, creationist people want to bring out, bring them on. I'll have we'll put it on you know public television here in the United States. Everybody can tune in, and then we can air it in classrooms, biology classrooms, and high schools all over America too, and watch you and your your colleagues demolish the the uh, arguments of the uh, of the creationists and then everybody will know you don't think that's worth doing no i mean they've won the moment you accept the invitation to have a debate at all because by the very act of a serious scientist going on a platform with one of them that gives the impression to the lay audience who probably don't much understand what's going on anyway that gives the impression here are two serious scientists up there on a platform thrashing it out. There's obviously got to be something in it, or Dr. So-and-so wouldn't be debating them. It's better not to debate them at all, although you do run the risk of being accused of cowardice or something like that, but I think it's a risk worth taking. Of course, you're, you're debating them at a distance by, uh, by writing books like The Greatest Show on Earth. You're, you're doing it That's right. When we set out the evidence, we, we, we put the evidence out there for everybody to see, but we do not, at least I do not, engage in a formal debate where you have, whatever it is, 20 minutes for the proposition, 20 minutes for the opposition. That whole idea perpetuates the fiction that there is something to debate. 
We're talking with Richard Dawkins, author of The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution. Richard, we've got to take a quick break here, but when we come back, I want to get into some of the other uh, jabs thrown uh, the evolutionist way, including uh, irreducible complexity, for instance, which is a, a big deal for, uh, for the creationists at the moment. Uh, we'll be right back with Richard Dawkins. You're listening to The Ron, Ron Reagan Show. <laughs> 